Joaquin, uh, I was wondering what the energy level would be like on a welterweight fight week, but it seems like... Uh, oh, we good. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we right where we belong, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I woke up at, uh, I think, 178 today. You know what I mean? So the weight feel good. You know, my energy's high. And uh, I don't know if y'all see it, but you know what I mean? I'm feeling good. It looked good. You know, I don't look all sucked out and depleted like a lot of these fighters. So, yeah, we're hunting. Yeah, yeah, I was actually kind of worried. I was like, I wonder what it's going to look like coming in here. But it nah, looks nah. like, you. I mean, is this a spot you should have been all along? I should have I been here the whole time, but it is what it is. I came in for that check. Uh, that's the only reason why I was at middleweight. You know what I mean? They gave me an opportunity to fight at 185 uh, when they seen me fighting at 185 for LFA. And, uh, you know, that's why I stayed there. And, and me getting those knockouts at 185, I felt good there. Because a lot of people don't realize I didn't cut any weight to get to middleweight, you know. So I walked around 185, 183, you know. And I was just able to walk into that cage and just be me. But now I actually have to, I wouldn't say sacrifice, but actually be disciplined on what I eat with my nutrition. But it's better for me, you know what I mean? Way more healthier for myself, you know. And my conditioning is even better because I have to work on my conditioning even more. You know, I'm a little skinny, you know what I mean? Uh, the muscle's still a little defined, but... Uh, I'm not bulking as much, so I feel like I'm in a healthier weight class for myself. So when you talk about, like, just dialing in, the, I mean, is it like an entire lifestyle change? It's got to be a lifestyle change, you know what I mean? For, for any fighter that's planning on moving down or cutting this type of weight, you know what I mean? you got to change the way you eat. you got to change the way you sleep. Everything, you know what I'm saying, is a part of this game when it comes to these weight cuts, you know? Was it the setbacks that, that forced you to make this decision, or did you kind of know that you uh, were always going to get yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got tired of getting knocked out. I ain't going to lie to you. Uh, yeah, man, being at 185, you know, you got a lot of heavy hitters out there, you know. But one thing about me, mentally, I'm not scared to fight anybody, but sometimes that's the problem. So it's not about being scared. It's about being smart, you know. So right now I feel like me being at 170, I feel like even though I took losses at 185, they prepared me for these moments at welterweight. The resistance and the strength that I was dealing with at 185, Man, I'm about to run past these dudes at welterweight. Let's get this money. That seems yeah. like a very mature approach. Do you feel like you matured a little bit? Like you want to fight the biggest, baddest dude out there, but you realize, you know, oh, yeah, 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 fight yeah, the guys yeah, that are yeah, my yeah, size. Yeah. You know, I just turned 29, so I guess so. I guess you could say that. But, you know, it's just common sense, you know what I mean? So if I keep allowing myself to go out there at 185, yeah, I might succeed, have a couple victories, but I just got to look at the data. I lose too, you know what I mean? So I just look at that data like, hey, I'm not trying to be a 50-50 fighter. You know, I want to be, you know, undefeated this year. You know what I mean? Not take no losses and make my way up to that what's away belt. The lifestyle change hasn't forced you to change your approach to social media, right? You're still... No, 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 no. Social media is the most important part. You already know that, you know? And I feel like, you know, my biggest thing I learned from you guys, you know, is constant work, constant work every day, man. Being able to push yourself out there or promote other people and stuff like that. So right now my mind has changed and it's been shifted, not as just a fighter, but as a businessman when it comes to my platform. Were you always, like, a, like growing up and stuff, were you always, like, do you enjoy entertaining people or whatever? Because it's, it's a good feed, man. You know? uh, yeah, I don't want to say entertaining people, man. It's just my personality, you know. So, you know, I feel like some people love it, some people hate it. But either way, I'm just being me, you know. So, yeah. Nice. All right. Well, we got to focus on the fight right now. Yeah, Matchup that you got here at Dangerous Guy as well. I mean, what did you think about this fight when they put it together? Uh, I, I think the UFC want me to catch a good body, you know. So, this is a good matchup for me, though. You know, this, this guy is going to come in there and try to bang. You know, he's uh, is going to give me everything that I'm looking for. And uh, it's going to be exciting, you know, for me, you know. And uh, I just feel like, you know, this is the time to show up and show out because of the fight cards, you know. And no disrespect to any other fight on there, but just for me, I just feel like ain't nobody finna do it like I do it, you know. So I feel like this is uh, one of the fights that I need to go ahead and show out for the UFC. Nice. Last thing for me, you pick up a big win here. What's the goal? I mean, you were super busy last year. You didn't necessarily get all wins, but you were very busy. You've had some time in between fights. Like, what's, what's the goal here? Shit, back to getting busy. <laughs> you know, you know, because uh, Andre Fialo, he has his uh, emotional support dog, whatever. Hey, I know it's mental health month, you know, uh, but what my therapy is is that cage, you know, and I love stepping into that cage because I get to freely express myself, you know what I mean, without looking crazy, you know. So I feel like as, as more I'm consistent in the cage, the better I get every single time, you know. So I'm definitely trying to get back busy. Yeah. Yes, sir. Have you seen much tape on your opponent? What, do you, what are your thoughts on his striking? Uh, my thought, I mean, he got power. You know what I mean? Everybody got power until that second round and third round show up. But, you know, uh, that's it. You know, I just can't allow this kid to touch me, you know what I'm saying, in the beginning of the rounds because all his uh, finishes come by, by the first, you know. So that's it. 
And since you, you're dropping down a little bit, do you feel like your, your stamina and your cardio is going to be able to go a little bit further with that power now that you've dropped down a bit? Man, I'm, I'm vicious right now, bro. You know, uh, I don't know. I shouldn't even give out my little technique, man, but we've we been doing something a little different. So uh, the way that we've been training, we've been training in the sauna, and I've been doing five-minute rounds in the sauna for three rounds. You know what I mean? Yeah, which is just a minute break and hopping right back in that thing. But the power didn't go away the whole time I kept the power. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, yeah, we we about to have a good time in this fight. Yeah. And, you, and you know, trading partners never trade punches. What are your trading partners saying about you? The the move down. What are they? What are their thoughts on how well you're performing? And you said trading punches. You're trading. You're your training partners. Training partners. Okay. What yeah, about yeah. them again? I'm sorry. Well, you know, because the training partners, they they won't pull any punches. They'll tell you what they're really thinking about you. Now that you've made this move, the guys that you're going and training yeah, with. Yeah, 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 yeah. What are they saying about the difference? Uh, uh, well, they they like to the move for me. You know what I mean? And I wouldn't even say my training partners back in Michigan, but here at Extreme Couture, they keep it 100. And they keep it real. Sean Strickland, Kiss Curtis, you know what I mean? Eric Nixick, man. You know, they keep it a buck, you know what I mean? Because, you know, I might not be a part of the team, but I, I feel like it's a mutual respect there, you know what I mean? And they always, they never going to have a biased opinion. And they get, they didn't gave me some good tips for this fight. Yeah. Who are some of your favorite uh, training partners over there at Extreme? Oh, man, Chris and Sean, for sure. Yep. Yeah. All right, and last for me, keys to a victory. What needs to happen to make sure you get your arm raised on Saturday? Uh... I'm going to do everything in my power to get my arm raised, you know, but at the end of the day, I want to show up and show out, like I keep saying, and I want this to be one of the type of performances that, you know, leave uh, Dana and leave the UFC staff and everybody saying, get that boy all the bonuses again, you know, that's, so that's the type of performance that I want to leave at the end of the day, you know. Best of luck. Thank you. Joaquin, um, what was it like? You know, training at extra, extra, Extreme Couture a couple years ago and then having to fight Chris yeah. and then going back. And well, well Albert, Albert first, then Chris. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, I guess we can go back on that maturity thing, you know. Um, so when I went to go train with them at first, you know what I mean, everything was love and everything of that nature. And then I got a fight with a bus, uh, Marco Madoff, I believe his name is. Um, he pulled out the fight. And then I got a call from my manager that uh, Albert Durayev, who trains at Extreme Couture, wanted to fight me. So at first, I thought it was like, man, come on, bro. Like, I just went over there. I went to go train with y'all. Why you want to fight me for? And all this other stuff, you know what I mean? And, you know, y'all know how that fight happened. But then I was like, all right, let's make it personal now. Let me hunt down Chris Curtis type stuff, right? And he did what he did to me, you know what I mean? And I realized, I was like, bro, it, this game ain't personal. It's just business at the end of the day, you know? And if I could still use this mentality, whatever, with the maturity and stuff like that, I realized, like, bro, you can train with the guys that you lose to because that's what's going to make you better. And a lot of people be like, oh, man, I want to fight that person again. Man, you got so many different individuals that you can fight and that you can make this money off of, but people just take an ego part of it, you know? And I, and I realized I didn't took the ego out of it, and this is just strictly business <coughs> with everybody that I fight now. What was the biggest thing that you took away from your last fight? Oh, I moved my ass down to 170. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then finally for me, uh who originally gave you your nickname? Uh my my original like Young Buck? New Manta. No, no, I gave myself that. Yeah, I gave myself that, man. He did did my little homework, you know what I mean? I be reading, you know what I'm saying? I'll be trying to read. <laughs> uh but my nickname New Manta comes from uh this man called Mansa Musa. Uh historically he was known as one of the richest men who have ever lived, you know. And uh, he came from the Mali Empire. And, uh, you know, I just, I just thought for myself, you know, I think of myself as a king. I think of myself as, you know what I mean, somebody that's a leader and uh, somebody that is always willing to um, explore, you know what I mean, new adventures and stuff like that. Because he's one of the people that as well did that um, with all the money that he had. And he searched for the new worlds. And like I said, I don't, I'm really not about to tap into it too much, but I feel like, you know, America was discovered by certain people of a certain continent, you know what I mean? Uh, way before uh, Christopher Columbus, you know, but that's a whole other different conversation. But, yeah, I got that name from uh, Mansa Musa. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Joaquin, you mentioned uh, something that's super important with fighters uh, as far as, like, the having that reset in your mind, that business and branding, like the Joaquin brand. What are some things that we might have not seen you work on that you want to kind of throw out there? Uh, I, I don't really want to throw it out there yet, you know what I mean? Uh, we, we keeping everything, you know what I'm saying, under wraps. And uh, when y'all see it, y'all see it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent, thank you, sir. And uh, it's not under wraps, so you just disclosed that that cut was super easy and how you would walk around that middle weight. I'm assuming that it was just giving up a little bit of muscle? 
to get yeah. to 170 because yeah. you're not a small guy anyway. Clay. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It was, it was the muscle. Like I said, you know, I'm a little bit skinnier right now. I'm not as bulk. Uh, but like I said, it's healthier for me. I've been eating clean, man. I've been eating salmon, chicken, rice, the same the same crap every single day. You know what I mean? Uh, no sugar, no salt type things. And, uh, you know, just a cleaner diet. I've been sleeping better. And uh, I'm just having a regular routine where we work in a lot of conditioning more than we, you know, lifting weights and doing all this other stuff, you know. So, yeah, I feel good right now. Man, you look great. Your thank attitude, you. I appreciate your positivity, it. Thank you. Thank you. That almost seems like it just brought a whole new longevity. Yes. To yes. Your career. That's the perfect word for it. Yes, sir. sir. And last for me, you mentioned the whole men mental health and, you know, your consistency in the cage. Some of the people would look at this as chaos. But yeah. this cage is your therapy, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, I really grew up in chaos, you know what I mean? I, I, I didn't see the trenches, you know what I mean? So for this, being in the cage and doing what I'm doing, you know what I mean, it's a safe environment. We got a referee in there, you know. If anything was to go bad, he would start the fight immediately, you know. So I feel like this is just a, a, a place where, like I said, I can freely express myself to, the tr uh, to my uh, fullest potential, you know, because this is what I dreamt about since I've been a kid. Like, that's no cap, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I say this is the 30th anniversary, I'm 29. That's all I, I've been thinking about is becoming a UFC fighter, you know? So, now that I'm here and I'm doing what I'm doing, I don't want to miss out on the opportunity to show the world exactly what I'm capable of and what my true potential is, you understand? And uh, for, for real, you know, with those losses that I had back to back, I really feel like me and Andre, you know what I mean, we do got to show out, you know? And ain't nothing promised in this game, but I really feel like with us having those two losses, we fighting for a contract. That's just my personal opinion. That's my mentality, and that's how I'm walking to that cage. I'm fighting for my job, and I'm going to beat your ass for that job. Yeah. I cannot wait to see it. Thank you. New Mansa, new weight class. Thank you. Good luck, Saturday. Hey, that's 100. Hey, thank you all, man. I appreciate you.